Hi there. I want to look at now transforming data with Power Query inside of our Power BI. To transform data with Power Query in Power BI, I have to hit the Transform Data button. This fires up the Power Query Editor and on the left hand side, I can see the 14 queries that I have in my Power BI file. Now when it comes to transforming data, we can transform queries, columns, rows and data. And I want to start by looking at transforming queries and what you can do with respect to queries. And we've touched on this in earlier videos. The first thing I want to look at is how do we delete a query? Okay, so let's say I don't need 10 most expensive products. I click on this query. I could right click if I like that method. And I could choose the option delete just listed here. But if you're a key person like myself, <clears throat> you may just want to click on that query and just press the delete key. So I'm going to delete that query. This message will come up and if you delete it, it has been then removed from your Power BI file. And so now that query is gone and I'm down to 13 queries. So deleting a query is quite easy, almost too easy. Now the next thing I want to look at is it's considered best practice to name queries, um, something that easily identifies what's in that table. And in an earlier video, we talked about and we went through the process of adding a prefix to some of these queries. Some of these queries have got the word fact. In fact, two of them have got the word fact or prefix fact at the beginning of their query name. That means that they're a fact table and they contain transactional records. Um, they usually occupy the many side in a one-to-many relationship um, and they create they contain all the events or transactions. Now the other tables have got DIM as a prefix and DIM is short for dimensional and a dimensional table has supporting or auxiliary information. So information regarding the employees for example, the date that they were hired, their birth date, things like that. So that's auxiliary information as opposed to orders which is actually transactional information. So do name your query something that everybody is going to understand easily. Use common business terms. Don't use sort of underscores and no spaces necessarily. Use terms that people will easily identify what's in each table simply by its name. Now if I want to rename a query, for example, we could double click. That would allow me to rename a query. Or you've seen me in previous videos, press the function key F2 that will rename a query. The other thing is you've got a properties button up here that will let you rename a query and add a description which is considered best practice to describe what is in each table or what is the purpose of that table. But also over here in the query settings you can rename a query and you can also get access to all properties using this hyperlink. So a multitude of ways that you can rename a query. Myself, I just simply click on a query, press F2 and find that that's the easiest way to rename a query. Others will right click and they'll use the rename option. So that's also an option. Okay. So we can delete queries, we can rename queries. I'm actually happy with those names, so I'm going to leave them as is. Now another aspect of best practice is to group your queries, especially if you've got a lot of them, into groups that people can then easily identify where tables are located. So I'm going to start first of all by grouping together all my flat files. I'm going to click on this query, hold the control key, click on this one, this one, this one and this one. Basically, all the queries that don't have the prefix fact or dim are flat files. They're not database files. So I'm going to right click one of the selection and I'm going to move to a group and I'm going to call it new group. And this group is called flat files. And so I just type the name. And then again, as I mentioned, best practice is to do a description. So my description is that these are independent flat files not included in the database data model. So there's my description, there's my group name and I click OK and it automatically groups those five queries into a group called flat files. And when I rest on the name of that group, there is my description helping people locate and understand what that group is and also I can just rest on various um, queries and if they had a description which they don't it would come up. So if I click on this one 
and then go to all properties for example I could say in here this is a list of our um, current volunteers and okay <clears throat> and when I rest on that query I'm actually now getting <clears throat> a description popping up this is the list of our current volunteers so that's how the descriptions work you can right click a query add a description and you can also add a description to a group now these other queries belong to a group which is the database model so I'm going to click this first one hold the shift key click the last one right click go into move to group and choose a new group there's my flat files there so that's how you'd move queries to an existing group but I'm going to create a new group this new group I'm going to call data <coughs> database data model and the description is that this is the Northwind Traders database model. And I'll click OK. And so now my queries are organized into a flat files group where there's five queries or a database data model group which is eight queries. And I'm, get, I'm given another group called other queries which is where all the other queries can reside. You can easily drag a query out of one group, literally up or down and into another group. So definitely name your queries, um, best practice, good names that people relate to. Organize your queries into groups and give your queries and your groups descriptions so people understand. Good documentation is important um, when creating your Power BI data. The other thing I'd like to just share with you is you can also, um, if I right click a query, you can also duplicate a query um, and make an exact copy of that query. Um, the other way of doing that, of course, is Control C, Control V, copy and paste. And you could also use copy and paste up here. But that's one way to duplicate a query. Um, this is also able to be done if I click on a query and go to the Manage button. I can duplicate a query and I can delete a query. And the other thing you can do is you can reference a query. So you can, it's like a duplicate. You can make a new query that references that query. So the first query does a number of applied steps and transforms the data. And then you make a new query that references that query and goes off in a different direction. And you can make another new query that references that query and goes off in a different direction. But the first few steps come from the first original query and any subsequent queries are referencing that original query. So I want you to know about that too, and we'll get into that as we work with this data. Um, but for now, I also want to know that you to know that you can expand and collapse these various groups. That's handy. You can right click and you can also choose the option to expand all, and you can right click and choose the option to collapse all as well. So the groups are very handy. I'm going to save my Power BI file and that looks at, and I'll go apply, that looks at transforming the queries themselves. In the next videos I want to look at transforming columns and transforming rows and transforming data.